Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, my name is Josh and over the past weekend I had a surprisingly fun time watching Underwater. So Underwater is a sci-fi action thriller horror combo uh, that came out over the past weekend. Uh, it stars Kristen Stewart and features TJ Miller. Um, I'm not actually a big Kristen Stewart fan. Um, I, you know, I haven't seen Twilight and everything like that. In all honesty, I've been told not to bother and I'm not super interested in that. But um, the things I have seen her in, I just feel like she's a little flat. Uh, in this, that is surprisingly not the case. Uh, so Underwater is a movie about um, a group of uh, scientists and researchers that have drilled, I believe, eight miles uh, into the ocean and are drilling into the ocean floor. Um, so, of course, the movie starts off pretty calm with just a little monologue uh, thing going on. Kristen Stewart's brushing her teeth. You're checking out everything in the bathroom. Uh, you know, a spider comes in and she's like, yo, where the hell did you come from? Yo, we underwater. I, where are you just crawling out the drain? Like, everything's fine. And I'm goddamn eight miles under the ocean. But anyways, um, and then of course, uh, some explosions start going off. Shit goes haywire. Everybody's running through the, uh, the facility trying to get out. You got smoke everywhere. You got water leaking in. You got debris. Um, the way that this whole uh, uh, beginning sequence was shot uh, was actually really good. Um, it was a little shaky and action-oriented, not like ridiculous Garbo shaky cam in some of that found footage shit, um, but it was, for lack of a better term, stably erratic. Eh? Eh? Um, but it looked good. Uh, you could follow everything easily. It wasn't too jarring. It was, it was nice. I, I really liked the way that that was shot. Um, and then as the movie progresses, you start uh, picking up uh, a member of the crew and a member of the crew until you end up getting uh, uh, like five or six people together. You got Kristen Stewart. You got funny guy T.J. Miller, who's the uh, comedy comedic relief. Um, you've got uh, the captain. You've got uh, Smith, his girl. Uh, you, you got plenty of people. Um, and the way that they all act together uh, is actually pretty good. Uh, they have a good back and forth uh, T.J. Miller's slipping in, you know, uh, his comedic relief and everything, like I said before, just cracking a couple jokes when he can, um, which I liked the way that he did it in this movie. It's not nearly as over the top as, uh, you know, him cracking jokes in Deadpool and some of his other comedic roles and everything like that. Um, he keeps it uh, lighthearted, but pretty in the moment which is also a little bit of a gripe that I have that I'll go ahead and get to maybe at the end as long as I fucking remember. Um, but for now, uh, so it progresses. They're trying to get uh, further and further to a safer part of the, uh, the combine and everything like that um, until they realize that their only chance of getting to where they need to go is literally walking on the ocean floor. Um, for those that don't know, I mean, obviously, if you see the movie, they'll let you know, but the ocean floor is pitch black as fuck. And, uh, they allude to the fact that there definitely might be more than just fish down there, which, uh, which is essentially your, your premise of the movie. Um, so throughout this journey, uh, there is something that is, uh, following them. There is something that is uh, standing in their path and there is something that is, um, you know, it's coming after people. Uh, the design on what is going on or what is following them, it's okay. It's pretty normal. Um, but it, it has a couple, like, uh, effective moments. Um, there are a few jump scares and stuff in the movie. Uh, also some, uh, tense setups and everything like that. A couple of the scares got me, but they didn't feel too cheap. They're not, like, your standard, uh, smoke and mirrors, ghost, Blumhouse, <laughs> uh, you know, shit going on. Um, so I didn't feel cheated, uh, into a scare. It was, it was pretty nice. Um, the movie escalates to a point... Uh, to where, you know, you're, you're, it's your, you're, you got a crew movie, you know, you know how that goes. When you got a big group of people, they're, they ain't all gonna make it, man. They can't, this isn't gonna be a big ass happy ending. We're all eight motherfuckers just right off, well, I guess not right off, slowly water walk into the safeness, you know, that ain't gonna happen. But, uh, what I do like is, uh, surprisingly, um, they went ahead and threw in a little reveal, 
uh, something that you might have guessed uh, while watching the movie. I didn't necessarily do it, but when uh, I saw it um, in theaters, I was like, damn, that's pretty sick, and I like the way you did that. But after the whole uh, uh, rising action climax reveal and everything like that, um, one of my gripes is uh, the, the very ending bit. I think was a little too standard action movie-esque. Um, you, of course, have, like, some big shit going on. Somebody lays down a fat one-liner. There's some, like, crazy shit. That's, like, the only, like, semi-Michael Bay-ass moment in the whole thing. Um, which I can get past because the rest of the movie was actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's not amazing. It's pretty tropey. Um, you can, you can definitely see where it pulls from other movies and other, uh, you know, more famous classic pieces of work and stuff like that. Um, but it is surprisingly a little less generic than I thought it would be. Um, I'm not a huge, like, sci-fi, um, crew with the ship, ship and the crew, uh, sort of guy. Um, uh, but I did really enjoy this. I think in the future, uh, it might end up having some sort of, uh, kind of cult following, um, I think there's also probably uh, a little little tidbits in the film that you're not going to see uh, right away. There was a moment um, during some uh, camera pans and everything like that that uh, right in like the corner of frame or right like almost out of view, uh, you get a, a glimpse of the thing that is uh, um, that is after the crew and everything like that. And I think the way that they did it, um, in all honesty, it kind of reminded me of some things in like Signs. Where, like, if you're really looking, you can see it, but if not, you can definitely miss it, even on, like, second and third viewings. Um, but I thought, overall, uh, those parts were really good. Um, my gripe from earlier was that this has some of the least amount of character development I've seen in a movie in a long time. Now, it's not 100% bad, because it doesn't take away too much from the whole film, but you, you don't hear a whole lot of family talk. You don't hear a whole lot of people opening up to each other. You don't hear a whole lot of people explaining what they did beforehand, um, how they got here, um, and other things like that. For there being a huge situation going on, everybody's not calm, but they're very focused on the matter at hand, and it doesn't waver that much. Um, like I said... It would have been nice to get a little bit more uh, from the characters as far as uh, what they're about and how they feel about things. Um, it just get a little more personal. Uh, with that being said, I think they had room to do that because the movie's only an hour and a half long. Um, I would have liked to see maybe, you know, 15 or 20 more minutes of uh, other things going on. Not necessarily just like another 20 minutes of character development and, uh, um, and build up and stuff. But uh, they, I think they could have worked some other stuff in. Uh, but overall, I was pleasantly surprised, and uh, if you get a chance while it's still in theaters, um, you should definitely check out Underwater.